So um, welcome. I just want to thank Eve and also all of the organisers of today's conference. I know it's been a huge undertaking. So uh, although you probably can't appreciate it online, uh, some of the things in the room have been absolutely tremendous. The signs, the food, the drinks. So not to make any of you jealous at home, but it's been great. It's been great here. So just thank you to everybody for that. I've just been a willing participant coming along for the ride. So it's been it's been great. So as uh, Eve mentioned, I'm uh, David Maidman. I'm a lecturer in psychology with in the School of Sport, Exercise and Health Sciences here at Loughborough. Now I've been working at Loughborough since 2019, but prior to that, I was working like Manisha at the University of Nottingham within the NIHR Nottingham Biomedical Research Centre. So when Mike mentioned the Orchard Project earlier on, that definitely took me back because I actually uh, worked with Mel. She was my boss for four years. Uh, so I knew that project very, very well. So it was great to see, great to see that. And also some of the follow-up work that, that's happened as a consequence. Now, it's a real pleasure to present to you uh, today a project that I've been working on since I started at Loughborough and have been developing along with Eve and uh, our PhD student Maria Goodwin, um, looking at improving uh, social and physical activity in older adults with hearing loss. And I've called that the SEVERE project. And I hope you can forgive me. I do know that, that that's not how you spell SEVERE, uh, but uh, it came to me as I was glossing um, some, uh, some floorboards uh, and I thought it was a great idea at the time. Maybe the paint fumes have got to me, I don't know. But uh, I know it, uh, Eve was very upset that uh, it wasn't spelled correctly, but I try my best. Oh, there we go. So. Brilliant. So as everyone in the room knows, uh, that's part of acting, I do like a bit of audience participation, purely just to take the limelight off myself. So I know at home, you might not be able to do this. I can see um, none of you have got your cameras on, which is very frustrating, but if you want to put your cameras on or if you want to use the reactions on Zoom, that would be amazing. Brilliant, Nadine, I can see you, that's perfect. So I'd like to know how many of you in the room, how many people of, uh, of you online know somebody who has a hearing loss? So just simply, if you know somebody, just raise your hand. So I've got you on my laptop here, so I can see a few people, a, a thumbs up from Alexandra, pretty much the majority of the people here, maybe one or two, not. Excellent, brilliant. So you can lower your hands, that's perfect. Thank you, everybody. So quite a few people then. Now, this doesn't actually surprise me, because actually um, disabling hearing loss uh, affects um, quite a large proportion of the global population. So it's estimated, the World Health Organization, uh, Organization estimates that around 466 million people globally are affected by disabling hearing loss. And due to our aging global population, this is expected to rise to 900 million by 2050. Uh, uh, so let's just put that into perspective. So within the UK, hearing loss roughly affects one in five uh, individuals. So it's highly likely that we all know somebody who has a hearing Hearing loss, whether they're uh, willing to admit it or not. And second question then, moving on, uh, I'd like to know if you know, and if you've read the abstract online, I, I annoyingly told you the answer, uh, so this is a good test to see if you've looked at our, our web pages. I wanted to ask whether compared to older adults that don't have a hearing loss, older adults with hearing loss are what in terms of being less physically active? So if you think they're 10% less physically active, I want you to raise your hand and I'll just get my camera up so I can see everybody on Zoom, on my laptop. Any, any uh, advances on 10%? Oh, there we go, going to widescreen. How about 20%? So are older adults with their hearing loss 20% less active? 40%? And how about 80%? Okay, so around 40 to 80. So well done for all of the all of you that said 40%. You read our web pages before coming today. That's excellent. It was in the in the abstract. Annoyingly, I put it in there. So that's right. So as you can see here, the older adults uh, who have a hearing loss are actually 40% less physically active than those that don't. Now, what does that actually mean? Why is that important? And why is it something that I'm particularly interested in? Um, why have I connected the connected this? So um, in terms of reduced physical activity, um, what this means is that a recent study showed that actually older adults who don't have a hearing loss actually engage in 30 minutes less physical activity than their non-hearing impaired counterparts. Now, this actually is rather problematic 
uh, because studies have shown this can result in accelerated aging, so up to 10 years of accelerated aging, and therefore individuals with hearing loss are more likely to become frail at a much earlier age. Now, in addition, this also places them at an increased risk of developing more life-threatening health conditions, which include cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and dementia, as Eve mentioned earlier. So depending on uh, the amount of hearing loss that you have, mild, moderate, or severe, you're at, I think, a, a two, three, and five-fold uh, 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 risk of, uh, of developing uh, dementia. Now, what previous research has shown, and something that we're interested in developing, is uh, that web-based physical activity programs can actually be shown to be effective at improving physical activity in healthy older adults, and, and these are specifically community-dwelling healthy older adults. Now, critically, um, unfortunately, no web-based physical activity programs have been specifically designed for the complex healthcare needs of older adults with hearing loss. And the reason that I say they've got complex healthcare needs is because not only do they have communication and listening difficulties, which obviously makes uh, taking part in some, uh, some of these activities difficult, but they also have a number of uh, other uh, comorbidities. So as I mentioned, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, uh, they're often prone to falls because of, uh, because of the link with their vestibular system in, in, in hearing uh, and also uh, dizziness and so forth. So really we need to address this gap and this is what I'm going to introduce to you now. So how, uh, how do we uh, think that we might look into to, to addressing this? So this is, our, this is our solution and I'm going to be proposing uh, a digital home fitness platform. Now this could consist of online exercise classes uh, that demonstrate and coach older adults with hearing loss uh, how to take part in suitable physical activities uh, for, uh, you know, for their abilities. Uh, so the closest analogy that I could think of, and this is probably something that's rather close to my heart, simply because I've been doing it a lot in lockdown, although uh, as discussions during the break uh, alluded to, maybe not so well for me, I have uh, actually gone up uh, a trouser size during lockdown. Uh, the closest analogy I could think of is something similar to the home fitness YouTube videos uh, that I try to take part in. Uh, throughout the, the, the three lockdown, two or three lockdowns that we've had. Now, given the diverse needs of older adults with hearing loss, uh, it's really important that these types of activity are targeted at all abilities and intensities. So what I'm talking about here is that uh, these, uh, these kinds of activities need to be developed for more kind of mild uh, intensity. So walking slowly, for instance, moderate, so a more brisk type of walking or even slow dancing, although as Eve mentioned, maybe that wasn't uh, so suitable uh, for some of the older adults with dementia. And also what we've shown is that dementia risk actually uh, with physical activity um, changes in a dose dependent manner. So actually the more vigorous the exercise, so running, jumping, lifting and so forth is actually much more beneficial for reducing some of these risks. So what I want to try and take people through is to kind of ramp up uh, their, their, their ability and their intensities as time progresses. Now, in addition, um, I'm thinking that it would be really great if we could include some kind of social element, given that social isolation, social in, uh, withdrawal is very prevalent in adults with hearing loss, but also older adults more generally. So I was thinking maybe a, a solution could include kind of on-demand classes, so the, the traditional YouTube format, but also live content. So I was thinking something like Peloton, uh, for, for instance, um, you know, where you've got these classes that are, people are doing them as, as groups and maybe some kind of forum where people can chat and share their experiences. Now also the, the platform could also include some activity tracking, uh, preferably via an off-the-shelf wearable such as a Fitbit or Apple Watch in order to improve motivation. Now what is very interesting and what some of you might not be aware of is actually hearing aids themselves can actually track activity such as step counting for instance, so it could even be, in, uh, it could even be linked uh, to, to a hearing aid that has that capability. And actually before you think that those types of devices are very expensive, they are freely available currently within the NHS within some departments as well. Now, I just wanted to mention very quickly uh, a bit of a, what I think of as a misconception or kind of a barrier that I often come against uh, when I talk to people about this specific area, because a lot of the people that I speak to often say that actually web-based or digital interventions really aren't suitable for older adults because really they don't access uh, or they, they, they don't have the competency to, to use these kind of type, types of uh, technology. They're not digitally savvy. Uh, and I actually refute that to some extent because the proportion of older adults who use the internet, who use smartphone um, 
oh, sorry, there's a, been a round circle around my slide. I don't know what happened there. Um, the proportion of adults who use the internet, who use uh, smartphone technologies has actually doubled um, over the last seven or eight years. Um, so all of these uh, statistics are available from the Office, Office of Na for National Statistics. And I've just looked at internet use here, uh, for instance. So in 2013, what we can see here is that actually about 29% uh, of, of older adults were using the internet regularly. However, moving on seven years later to 2020, this has almost doubled now to 55%. And actually the statistics, the smartphone, uh, smartphone use are actually much more compelling. So about 79% of older adults use a smartphone or, or, or a tablet. And what I'm arguing here is that what this suggests is that a digital home fitness platform would certainly be a solution that's viable uh, to address the unmet need with regard to older adults and physical activity. So what are our, our next steps then? Where are we going to uh, going to next? So uh, Maria's been fab. She's undertaken a lot of work assessing associations between hearing loss, physical activity, and non other non-communicable diseases. And what we'd like to do now is to move on uh, to developing some kind of suitable intervention. And what we would like to do is to develop the content of a digital home fitness platform. And something that I'm very keen on doing is using a more participatory co-production approach. And I think, um, uh, Mike mentioned this this earlier. So something that we might look to do is semi-structured interviews uh, in terms of how we can reduce social, social isolation and improve physical activity, specifically in older adults with hearing loss. And actually Maria is currently uh, doing that. She's collecting data for that. And then that would then be followed by co-design workshops with the target population, with end users and other key stakeholders, such as uh, charities, um, uh, manufacturers of, of hearing products, uh, in order to identify what the unmet needs are and how these could be best addressed. This would then be followed by iterative usability testing to make sure that some kind of platform is, is usable and then followed by a full scale evaluation of its, of its effectiveness. So following best practice recommendations by, by our research councils in the UK. Now, finally, I just wanted to thank uh, the team uh, who have been integral in developing this area. So we've got Maria. Uh, I apologise, I didn't ask if I could show this, this image. <laughs> so probably not, not her favourite, so I'll move on quickly, as well as Eve, And of course, everybody within acting as well, who's all, who have always been such a great sounding board for any uh, ideas. And thank you, everybody. And I should also mention images courtesy of uh, my middle son, Jared. The only stipulation was that it had to have a copyright symbol on every single one, uh, hence why, why it's there. So thank you. Any questions, obviously put them in the chat or you can, you can email me directly. Thank you, everybody.